Hello my soccer universe. I literally have no words, absolutely no words to describe what happened yesterday evening. I, I, I literally, I cannot. Uh, it's not the first time that something like that happened, uh, if I think about it. But uh, that we have a Liverpool Real Madrid final, I have no words. I was going in my head, I mean, I um, going now anyway for a later release schedule. Um, I had the entire morning to think about, um, you know, what will the headlight be, a headline be uh, about this Champions League semifinal. And, uh, you know, I could have gone with Magic Madrid, mad madness in Madrid, more madness and blah, blah, blah. I hate those headlines too, to be honest, unless it's, Although it would be just justified, but I have actually used something like that before. I don't want to repeat myself. And to be honest, I think no words, or I have no words. It, it just perfectly describes this one. Uh, I really, really have a hard time comprehending this. And this is what makes the Champions League the best competition out there. I love the Europa League. I love the, even the new Conference League and so on. But that amount of drama where after the first leg you think everything is done and it's still up for grabs until the very last second, this is something that's very uniquely Champions League. This is what makes the Champions League intriguing. And even the Champions League reform as it stands will not change this. It will change and I actually, I mean, the more I think about it, I can see some parts of the, of the reform actually have a... Uh, a good route because let's face it the Champions League group stage is usually not as exciting the excitement comes quarter final semi-final maybe round of 16 uh, hopefully final but <laughs> Real Madrid three times in a row with improbable I mean three times they were down and out three times they make it through and yesterday I mean you were watching the evening uh, the longer, I mean, there was a period where I thought maybe they can score, but they were always off target. And then at the very end, at the very end, it was, uh, City were cruising. City were cruising. The only thing I didn't do is put the ball into the net. They kept them alive and within a minute, they <laughs> put it into overtime. It was even funny because um, I was kind of waiting. <laughs> We waiting to put my wife to bed uh, uh, and everything. Yeah, please let, make it in such a way that, you know, I don't have to wait uh, so much for her. And I was a little bit antsy already. Yeah, the game is ending soon. She's not da 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 da. As soon as the saying already, I said, I said to her, you know, I didn't say anything before. I, I decided, okay, let's not. I said, yeah, you can take your time. It's all right. You can take your time. It's going to take a while. Unbe freaking leaveable. This is the one. Uh, I, I, I I don't want to say D because I would have to go dig deep into history. But this is one of the most incredible runs to a Champions League final. And it is a little bit reminds me of the fact that um, I think we had a few times when uh, Barcelona Real Madrid final was very well on the cards and it just did not happen. And uh, I had the same feeling kind of here but then not that Liverpool Manchester City would be too big for uh, its own sake and maybe that's why it cannot happen I don't know I don't know what Carlo Angelotti is doing to with his players uh, I just praised him in a video uh, yeah yeah he's rightfully up there and I'm totally forgetting now about the other semi-final which for about uh, at halftime it was also all square and you really thought that there was a major upset in there. It is just that I think on one side uh, Villarreal reverted to back to their first league form and second that uh, Liverpool made the right changes. Uh, this was already an incredible game. I did not foresee. I actually went into Tuesday. I mean, I remember talk, talk to, to my wife because, you know, the, the, game, the games are late and um, we have been a, a little bit, you know, short on sleep uh, and so I said yeah maybe the Tuesday matches that might not be the greatest uh, I think of all the evenings that are now coming Tuesdays maybe the one where I will not stay up until the end well in the end it turned out that I could have switched off I did not but um, crazy 
Absolutely crazy. I mean, we almost, there was a chance to get a Villarreal Real Madrid Champions League final. And that after first leg where City thoroughly outplayed Real Madrid. Thoroughly outplayed Real Madrid. Real Madrid got three goals out of thin air. And it's literally Real Madrid have nine lives, at least in this Champions League. They are like the horror movie villain that you wanna kill. You thought you'd kill them, they come up, you kill them again. No, you completely need to obliterate them. And yeah, I guess Liverpool will be happy that the final is only played over one leg in a neutral venue. So, yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbefreaking believable. In any case, uh, I think I, I think it's probably best if we just talk about uh, the, a little bit the nitty gritty of the games, and then uh, just a little short preview of the final. Although I will give you, of course, ahead of the final, I think a day or so before, I will give a full preview. Uh, we'll start in Villarreal, uh, which. It, this was a literary game I did not see. Villarreal scoring two goals, let alone two goals, even a goal against Liverpool. The way that the first leg went, yes, they had a short period at the end of that match where you uh, saw that maybe if they would play a little bit more proactively, there is a chance for Liverpool to uh, to concede. However, what they did to Liverpool in the first half is exactly what Liverpool did to them. They pressed them high, they made the uh, spaces tight and uh, immediately played the ball forward and attacked them. And Liverpool actually probably thought, yeah, we're going to play this easy and um, get out. No, absolutely not. Of course, it helps a lot um, if uh, Gerard Moreno is back in the lineup because he's the talismanic striker, although you could see that uh, he was not the fittest. Um, but he gives uh, the Villarreal attack a completely different dimension. However, it was also mi uh, missing was, of course, Dan, Dan Yuma, uh, but Dio played for him. And after three minutes, he put the ball into net. And uh, the way Capoe pulls the ball back to him, if that was intentional, this was a perfect alley-oop from basketball. I don't think it was intentional, but if it was, bravo. This was a perfect cutback to uh, Dia, who did just had to pull, pull, pull an M, 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 empty net. And then it was all, uh, you know, Liverpool couldn't get any attacking sequence together. I think they had a few tentative attacks, but nothing really uh, cohesive. And it was Villarreal, who even had a few penalty claims um, that did not happen. But uh, the first half, uh, it was all Villarreal. And uh, Kapka Kapoe uh, uh, assisted the second one through Cochleur, who completely uh, uh, mi was mismatched. I think, uh, was it Robertson that he had the head, I guess? I'm doing this now from memory. Um, but that 2-0, uh, it was fully deserved at that time. And as the legend goes now, I think it's legend now, uh, Klopp asked his assistants to, uh, at, uh, ahead of halftime, please give me a sequence where we actually uh, stitched a few passes together so that I can show it to my players to motivate them. And, and he goes back, there aren't any. Now, um, why then the turnaround came? I think for me there are three factors. The first one is uh, Villarreal the halftime came at a completely wrong time for Villarreal. It gave um, uh, Una Emery a little bit time to think and a little bit time to, you know, kind of see, yeah, we have a 2-0. Let's take it easy. That changed the complexion of the game because suddenly Villarreal was not going all forward, not going all over all, all, all press. Maybe they were also a little bit tired, so they thought, yeah, maybe now we have them, we have it uh, packed back at 2-2. Two, two. Maybe now let's have them come and then we launch a counter deck. It, it, it very much seemed to me that this is what uh, kind of was the thinking of how we, we continue to play. I think if uh, that 2 nil comes right after the half, they continue playing and then Liverpool might be in for real trouble, potentially. Potentially. The second one is Luis Diaz for Diego Jota, uh, who gave the Liverpool attack, and he might be one of the best transfers uh, of the winter, or, or if not the best transfer of the winter, who completely gave Liverpool a different dimension in, in, in attack. I, I really think Jota is a great player. But Luis Diaz is on a, a different level. The way he... 
uh, you know, uh, runs, keeps running, keeps pressing, uh, left, right, also goes directly for our goal, uh, sees also the other players. Uh, there was a lot of good things uh, have happening with Luis, Luis Dias suddenly, uh, you know, and, and, and this never say die attitude. Uh, he's a fighter, but he's, you know, a little, little muzzly, blah, 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 ru 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 running around. There was a whole lot more there for Liverpool suddenly. That is one thing that changed. And the third one is, yeah, if Villarreal had a proper goalkeeper, and I, uh, Jeronimo Rui, I can say uh, he won them the Europa League. But please, do you have any clause in the contract that if you catch a ball, you lose like a million uh, euros? I mean, it was really, every ball was bouncing or whatever. And uh, the first two goals, I mean, as soon as the Fabinho goal went in, this went straight through his legs. This is nothing that he should ever concede. I mean, Salah, this was not a, a, a crazy shot from Fabinho, but that shot, and this was really at a time when he thought, oh, we are really looking comfortable there. But that shot then completely changed the game. And then Alexander Arnold plays it to Luis Diaz, who is not uh, offside uh, and also is not giving up. And uh, it again goes through the goalkeeper's legs. And then uh, Sadio Mane. Makes it 3-2 at a point where, yeah, the, the tie was settled. Uh, it got then a little bit feisty from the VRL side, uh, who I, I actually think it was not that they wanted to be a nasty. I, th I think it was a little bit more that they were tired and were got late into, chal into challenges. And so in the end, Capoe, who had a brilliant fur for serve, gets the second yellow and is sent off um, for that. Liverpool winning that one uh, through to the final quadruple, I hate the word, but quadruple hopes alive. One cup in the back, two finals, and you're one point behind in the league. Still don't think the league. I was wrong. Manchester City is not going to win the champ Champions League, though. But yeah, uh, crazy game. Already a crazy game. Uh, however, uh, as soon as Fabinho made it 2-1, uh, there was a clear sign this is only going only, only, only to go one way at halftime. You really thought that Liverpool are in for trouble. And this was probably the most timely halftime that I've seen in a long time. Moving over to Madrid. Um, there is something, even if the Bernabeu is being re rebuilt, I still don't quite get why there are the tarps uh, right in the TV camp cameras on the other side of the law. Um, uh, what are they building there? That's, I, I think that's, that's the question I uh, should say. Uh, Great atmosphere, but for most of the time, Manchester City kept Real Madrid at bay at the few chances. I mean, there were especially early on a few things. I mean, it may have been offside even, but there were a few times where Benzema, uh, Benzema was really uh, off target, uncharacteristically off target, uh, where you really thought, hmm, this is not Madrid's day. And yes, they were uh, definitely pushing more, but uh, Man Manchester City went more into... Uh, <laughs> into, into a mode of let's absorb this, uh, we don't need to go all out all the attack. To the credit, Real Madrid also realized, and that is an understated, um, that the Real Madrid players themselves, 2 nil down in Manchester, uh, kind of said, yeah, we have to make things tighter, we should have it two eights, we have to go two sixes between the, uh, to close the space between the uh, defenses to, to, to be a little bit tighter. And that moment Real Madrid was in play. So uh, which, we, 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 which is the one thing that this Real Madrid side definitely have. Not only do they have a very pragmatic coach that uh, takes each player uh, seriously, and you see it, and uh, I want to make a point. I mean, he is consulting with his big players of uh, what they think could be done which is uh, so typically Angelotti in many ways, but also the players are uh, seasoned enough to make adjustments by themselves and they get the, um, uh, the allowance more or less from An uh, Angelotti to do so if they feel like, uh, like it. This is probably the one secret sauce that this Real Madrid have that for instance, the Manchester City doesn't really have. The other thing that Manchester City definitely has is a long injury list. And I mean, De Bruyne def definitely didn't look uh, the part on this day because uh, he was not there. And, and, and I think he had so much pain. He, he was playing on painkillers, which is also not the right thing uh, to do. But overall, I always felt the Manchester City felt squarely in control of that one.
despite Real Madrid a little bit more threat threatening, um, I really thought that uh, right off the kick of to the second half, Real Madrid I said, "Let's go for it! Let's go for it!" There was a li really literally five minutes uh, right off the, off the kick off where they really thought, "Yeah, let's go for it! We may uh, get that one." They didn't. And then the longer the game, the game completely fizzled out. The crowd was taken out out of it. Uh, rockers, I mean. For Bernabeu's standards, it was a raucous crowd. Let's put it that way. Uh, but it was everything was taken out of it. And, we, and Manchester City kind of, yeah, a little bit. We absorbed them. Um, we had control of, of, of the game. Real Madrid are not really threatening us. And then, uh, you know, a, a, a brilliant pass by uh, Bernardo Nato Silva and Riyad Mahrez from a very uh, tough ankle. Just puts it on the net, saves a saves, 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 saves minute. And at that point, Cal Walker, who was also the shaky, uh, came off for Zinchenko and De Bruyne for Gundogan. I mean, uh, just those changes tell, tell you uh, how good the bench was. Uh, what I actually thought is that Tony Kroos came off uh, in the 68th for Rodrigo. He became a very important player. Uh, but he took it, he, he then took the entire loaded midfield off. Uh, Casemiro came off for Asensio and Modric for Kamavinga right after it was 1-0 uh, for Manchester City. And then it was hang on time for Real Madrid. Because Jack really should come on in the 78th for Gabriel Jesus and, uh, and Fernandinho for, for, for Mares. Jack Rich had two brilliant chances. One cleared off the line by uh, Ferlan Mendy, who uh, act actually hits, I think, another City player in his, his clearance. But it, it was one of the one of the cl uh, weirdest clearing sequences. And then also another really shot that, uh, if you look at the, re the replay, um, Courtois, this is such a uh, sneaky save that you need to replay, uh, puts his foot on and it doesn't go in. Two clear chances. This is where City should, should have done it. But uh, they looked so safe. They lit the Real Madrid literally looked safe. And then there was the one time where there was a quick pass. Benzema uh, crosses in and, 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 and Rodrigo makes one one ninth, 90th minute. Then the six minute sign goes up and Asensio crosses and Rodrigo heads it in. Within 60 seconds, they made it the impossible possible. And I was there, what? What? I was laughing. This was just laughter. I mean, uh, I, at this stage, you cannot uh, speak of deserved any, any, anymore. You just have to look at this Real Madrid and lost their fighting spirit. Real Madrid and the Champions League, there is something about it. It's the birthright of this club. I, I cannot say it anywhere else. And from that moment on, I think everyone knew how this was going, and then when Ruben Dias makes this uh, rather unnecessary penalty foul on, um, I think it was Benzema, Benzema converts. I think there was even another clear penalty shot. I think there was a hand, hand, but from City a little bit later, but City was not going to come back from that one. Uh, Real Madrid was way more comfortable in this overtime against City than uh, they were uh, against Chelsea, because Chelsea really could have uh, put Real Madrid out. This was comfortable for Real Madrid. Uh, my two favorite scenes on the touchline was, I think it was, um, what was in the early overtime where you see just Pep, who usually is so agitating and uh, da, da, he's just sitting in his uh, seat. There. You could see he doesn't know what to do anymore. He has to, this is not on Pep. This is the one time that you cannot say that Pep overthunk this. This is the one time I don't think the Guardiola is to blame for this one. He had done everything. The only thing that his city side did not do is put the frigging ball in the net a little bit more, especially Manchester. Conceding that third goal was a death sentence for them because it kept Real Madrid in play. Going a goal down to the Bernabeu, no. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it is really unbelievable. And my second one is how, you know, you had, I mean, Benzema came even often um, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, just before halftime and all over time. And then even Vinicius Jr. come on. I mean, the players he, he, he put on, Asensio, Camavinga, Ceballos, Lucas, Vasquez, and Vallejo for Ed, 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 Ed Alaba was a player. So all the stars were on the sideline and they were coaching together with Ancelotti. This was for me, this is for me the side of this squad. 
that uh, there are so there is so much uh, soccer intelligence on that uh, squad that it's not that they manage themselves. I mean, Angelotti makes a final call, but he's completely involving his most seasoned players. And I gotta say, this must be so much fun to uh, have him as a coach. And, you know, as a Milan fan, I'm totally with Angelotti on this one. I mean, Angelotti for me is one uh, is uh, holy in many, many ways. Real Madrid wins 3-1. I mean, I, I, I still cannot, can't can believe it. And going, going to the final. I mean, to, to be honest, uh, just by the names, Liverpool against Real Madrid in Paris uh, doesn't sound bad. It's not in Paris in San Francisco because that was, was the other thing. Liverpool already won, uh, I think, in Rome twice uh, the Champions League or the European Cup. They have won once in Paris against Real Madrid. And now they're going again back to Paris. Now they're going to Saint-Denis. So it's not necessary Paris. So if you want to have that... But yeah, we have a big name final and what's kind of important for me, we still have a final between two different nations. We don't have an all English final or an all Spanish final, which uh, to me is always a step up. This is something, yes, I think I would have loved to see Liverpool against Manchester City. But I think Liverpool and Real Madrid is it's, it's a decent enough final. And especially this Real Madrid side. And I want to see if Angelotti can do it. Uh, and then he should ride off in the sunset, take over the Azzurri and, and coach them to the World Cup in 26. Just saying, at the moment, Carletto can do what he wants. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, at the moment, I will do a review, uh, a, a preview of the final. Um, but at the moment, Liverpool are 55% favorites to the final, but given how this Real Madrid team is performing, who cares about status of favorites or whatnot? It just doesn't matter anymore at this point. Unbelievable. Any case, I really would love to know what you thought about this um, Champions League semi-final. Uh, yeah, I, w I would like to hear from you. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!